Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming June of 2016 regional auction. And you know, the cool thing about looking at obscure, weird old guns, to me at least, or one of the cool things, is finding ideas that people had that just went out of style. Maybe because they were really bad ideas, maybe because they were underappreciated ideas, but finding things that simply aren't done anymore. And I have an excellent example of that here today. This is a Dutch police revolver, and these date from about 1891, 1895 was the origin of this type. Um, and then they were used well after, well, all the way through World War II and probably after, especially in the case of police guns. Now, the world of Dutch revolvers is kind of a complicated and poorly understood one. We will get into their military revolvers later because there's a bunch of obscure stuff going on between the, the Dutch home army and the Dutch colonial army. And that's not the subject today. Today, I just want to take a look at this police gun because it's got this rather odd safety on it. Let's take a look. All right, so what's the deal with this thing? What we have here is a safety, a big safety with a big, easy to grasp knob. And this is basically, the safety is just what you see. This screw is a pivot. This doesn't go through and interact with the mechanism in any way. What it does is lock the cylinder. So I can re rotate it a little bit here, but having this plug in the front of the cylinder prevents it from moving. Now it would also prevent me from cocking the gun because cocking it requires rotating the cylinder. Now the purpose of this, and that's where the coolness comes in, is our cylinder here, as you can see, is marked one has an arrow indicating which way the thing re uh, revolves when you cock the hammer, and we have a cylinder number two, and then proof marks, which we'll get to later. Now, the way the Dutch police worked is this is a five-shot revolver, and it would be carried with chamber number one holding a blank, chamber number two holding a tear gas cartridge, which my understanding is was pretty much a joke and might as well also be a blank, and then chambers three, four, and five having actual live bullets. Now what you would do, see that, you can see that making sense. The, the police decide or the police commissioner or some politicians decide that, you know, we're not comfortable with the police just shooting someone on the, you know, right at the outset. So we'd like to force them to use blanks and less lethal tear gas sort of things to try and resolve a conflict. So we're going to decree that the police have to carry blank rounds in the first chamber of their revolver. Well, that's excellent uh, for them, but how do you ensure that the blank is always the first round fired? Because the one thing worse than not having all live ammo in a gun is thinking that you're firing a blank and actually firing a live round, or vice versa. So the solution was we will mark the first cylinder, the one that has the, uh, the blank cartridge, and then we'll put this safety on that locks the cylinder in place. So this can't inadvertently revolve and mix up your cartridges on you while it's being carried or handled. And in case there's any doubt, it's got a nice big marking right there on the cylinder to remind you. So if you need the gun, you can draw it, disengage the safety, and then when you cock the hammer, now chamber number one is lined up and ready to fire. That's your blank cartridge. Cock it again. Now we have number two, which is our tear gas cartridge. Fire that one. And now you've got your three live rounds. So in an emergency, you could just disengage this. It's a double action gun, so you could just crank off the first two wherever to get rid of them and ha then come to the third. Or you can disengage the safety, manually rotate it past those two, and then you're ready to fire with your first live cartridge. So to me, that's a really interesting mechanism. This is not the sort of thing that police departments would do today for all sorts of reasons, but it's neat to see that they had this policy idea and they decided to add a hardware element to it, basically. Now, this, all right, now this gun itself has some details that we can also look at. On the side of the frame there, it is marked Cal 9.4. Um, the Dutch used a 9.4 millimeter revolver cartridge. That was their military standard and also used by the police. That's a 382 caliber or .382 inch bore. A uh, little bit unusual. Now our markings on the side of the barrel, we have uh, this is a, the company that was selling these was based in both Amsterdam and Arnhem. 
And then on the opposite side, we have uh, Ned Wappen Magazine. Uh, so basically, Dutch gun company out of Harlem. So this was a, one of the major arms retailers in uh, Holland at the time, and they had locations in Harlem, Amsterdam, and Arnhem. Now the gun itself is actually Belgian made, and we know that from these proofs on the cylinder. That ELG in an oval is a classic, well-recognized Belgian proof, and then there's also a couple of proof marks there on the frame and barrel, and these, these all match up. So this gun was made in Belgium, which is not uncommon at the time. Uh, Liège in particular in Belgium was a major center of arms production and they would have been relatively inexpensive. Um, these probably would have been made to a rather higher standard than a lot of other uh, Belgian production guns. But at any rate, they were made in Belgium and then they were, they were marked with the name of the retailer who had commissioned them. They would then be imported into Belgium, already proofed and ready to put up for sale. So there you go. Uh, definitely not something that's used so much anymore, uh, but def it goes to show you the versatility of a revolver, that you could do something like that and specify tear gas and blanks and live ammo and, and how to keep track of it all. So I think it's a really cool example of old police equipment. Um, you know, it's neat to see something that ties the equipment to the procedures tangibly like this. So, of course it is coming up here for sale, so if you're interested, have a look at uh, Rock Island's catalog page. You'll find that linked in the description below. You can take a look at their pictures and description. And uh, I believe this is in a batch with a couple other guns. So if you're interested in them, you can place a bid right there on their website. Thanks for watching.